training every day and um, so I was six hours on training every day so that got so I couldn't manage sports so I had to drop out of Valley and uh, I heard about NIOS. The NIOS is the National Institute of Open Schooling so that was like a godsend for me because it gave me all the flexibility that I needed. Um, uh, yeah, so, yeah, and NIOS has these uh, different ways of writing examinations because you can write an on-demand examination, which is exactly what we need because we spend a lot of time traveling. So our travel schedules sometimes collide with your exams. So this was really important for me. And um, yeah, so I finished my 10th and I'm going to join the right now. Yeah. So basically, you are saying that you love both sports and education. It's not like you don't like education and you did sports. You have a passion for both. Yes. Exactly. And you found an iOS as the sweet spot which let you do both of them. Yes, exactly. That's brilliant. I'm going to come back on that iOS part because I want to understand a lot more about it because I'm sure there are many parents out there who A, may not know about it. B may have some myths no. that NI, NIOS is a slightly lower in terms of uh, rigor and other things. And I want you to demystify that. I think we can take that one question and then I'll go to Adil. Is NIOS the same as a CBSC or anything lower than that? Or what's your view on the rigor and the whole curriculum? Yeah, uh, so I studied in the Valley School. The syllabus was ICSE. Mm -hmm. So um, when I moved to NIOS, I didn't find that much of a difference. Uh, yeah, and then for like science and stuff, they make you, uh, you do your lab assignments and stuff. And all of that is pretty strict, like a normal school. Mm -hmm. But I guess the curriculum and all is pretty much equal. So, okay. so it's, I don't think it's true that NIOS is in any way lesser than other syllabus. So what does NIOS offer that other syllabuses don't offer? Is it just about flexibility? Yeah, flexibility and you get to uh, choose the subjects that you actually want to do because like in CBSE and stuff, you have to study by the job science, but like in NIOS, there are a lot of options. So you basically you have to do five subjects and you can choose any five subjects with a language. So, so I really like it. All right. Okay. We're going to talk more about that NIOS and other questions. Adil, I want to get to you. Tell us about your journey into the world of tennis. How did you manage your education and the grueling schedules that you have in tennis? Oh, uh, so well, to start off, I started playing when I was five and there was a club uh, near my house where they had a coaching by the name of Rajni Ravindran. He was the coach over there. So basically, uh, well, my parents had this rule in the household that if we wanted to start a new hobby, we had to ask for six months. And only after asking for six months did we prove to them that we were serious about it. And once starting the sport, we had to stick with it for a year. So I think this was very valuable and it was a really good rule that they incorporated to with me and my sister because uh, once we finally got onto the tennis court, it was six months after beginning to ask. So we kind of really valued being there and... Um, and from the, from the get-go, I really enjoyed playing the sport. Uh, I love the intricacy of it. I love the, uh, all the aspects on the court, the tactical, the mental challenges and everything. So, and here 15 years later, I feel the same way about the sport. I still love it. So I think the, the rule which my, which my parents set kind of made me really value every, every session I got on the court. And, um, and I still love the sport. How difficult was it to study and play at the same time when you came to 10th, 12th? Did you also do NIOS or did you some, do something else? I, I did actually. So at, uh, in around eighth grade, I was in eighth grade and I realized that it was very tough to incorporate regular schooling and try and become a professional tennis player. So I started searching for online platforms to continue my education. And this one uh, summer I was in the US and I was playing a tournament over there. And they had a booth of this uh, American online school called Laurel Springs School. So I went there and I asked them questions and I found it very interesting. You know, you could continue your education with the computer and I didn't need to attend class. I didn't need to keep coming back to Bangalore to go to school physically. So, so I basically started my first experience of online school schooling um, with an American school. But I realized that uh, the schooling, the education is purely based on, for example, American history and uh, everything was related to American stuff. So I wanted to find something in India, which I could, um, which I, I could relate to more. 
and that's when I discovered uh, NIOS. And I, my parents and I put in a lot of thought before joining NIOS. We wanted to, you know, explore all options, and we realized that this this open school was the act, in fact the best option, uh, mainly by realizing that the quality of education was not being hindered in any way mm-hmm. by not having the attendance. There was no real requirement, and that was really important for me, so I could travel around the world. There was the flexibility to choose subjects, as a uh, as Kriti already mentioned. So I didn't, for example, have to take science and maths subjects, which I didn't really enjoy. And I knew I wasn't going to take up medicine in the next coming years. I wanted to pursue sports as a career. So I chose my own subjects. I got to choose stuff like psychology, economics, business, which I really enjoyed. The flexibility of exams. They have the system called the on-demand examinations. So you, a month and a half or two months before the exam, you can actually choose to write your exam, which means you can study for one exam for two months write your exam and then continue basically fly back from wherever you are back to wherever you're studying an iOS from to take the exam and then head out again. So it wasn't like I had like these uh, specific dates where I had to oblige to the, to the university and um, I had to keep coming based on their demands. I could choose my own, my own schedule. So that helped help a lot with the flexibility part. And it is widely recognized as a, as a high school. So there was no, it wasn't like I was lowering my standards joining an iOS. It was as good a school as any other. So you are now in Jain University, right? I am. Yeah. So when you approached any university, did they raise any question that, hey, this is an IOS? No, we don't recognize it. Or they said that, hey, this is as good as any other education. How was your experience when you moved from college, sorry, school to college? Honestly, there was no um, questions raised about NIOS. I mean, uh, it's a government initiative, so it's widely recognized across India. In fact, I got a lot of opportunities um, in US to join colleges there, so on scholarships. So clearly, NIOS wasn't anything holding me back, having graduated from there. So I feel, and I, um, a prime example would be a tennis player, Somdev Devarman, who graduated from NIOS and then went to UVA, I believe, University of Virginia. So okay. there are obviously a lot of examples of people graduating from NIOS and you know, pursuing college tennis or getting into universities wherever they, they want especially with sports quota these days, it's, it's much easier. Right. That means there are examples of many. And before we go on, uh, Mr. Satish, please put yourself on mute. And all of you, please respect the webinar. Please mute yourself. You may not know it, but your television and your conversations will come here and it will disturb all of us. So, if we see that there's a lot of disturbance, we are going to throw you out of the webinar. So please follow basic discipline. There's one more participant right now, Mr. Selvam. I can hear you. Please put yourself on mute. Uh, thank you very much. Adil, coming back to you, um, you know many more people who are now in colleges and have done an iOS and they were admitted without any problems. That means yeah. this particular stream of education is as recognized as anybody else. Am I correct in that it assessment? Is, yes, definitely. All right. Now, a question to you, Adil, and then I'll come to you, Vijay. Um, how intense is sports? Could you give us an insight on the intensity of a sports training because of which you then need to make a decision? Like how many hours would you play in a week? Uh, so roughly, I'd say between 25 to 30 hours a week is mm-hmm. uh, what you're investing into the sport if you want to pursue it as a career. So you're obviously spending majority of your hours in a day on the tennis court, on the gym, or on the track, wherever uh, you're you're called to work. But I think, yes, it is very demanding to uh, professional tennis or professional, any sports to go professional. And um, yeah, there are a lot of sacrifices that need to be made. I am sure it's not, it it definitely wasn't an easy decision for me. Like, oh yes, I want to go pro. Obviously I had to think about it, look at all my options. And then I decided, you know, I really want it. There's a lot of desire, passion, which you, like there needs to be inside of you, intrinsic. So I think um, I think the demand for the sport is is very very difficult, and it's it's not an easy decision, of course. Yeah, Kriti, how about you? How many hours do you put in a week? So I put in about five hours a day. So like you said, twenty-five. Wow, five. That's intense. Five hours a day. That's like almost like going to another school. Exactly. That's true, yeah. Wow, that's very intense. So basically, you're working double hard. You've got to then balance a five-hour grueling daily career and sometimes a five-hour grueling education. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it, it's not just the, the being on the court, the being in the gym. There's also the nutrition. 
the getting yeah. plenty of sleep, rest, all of that that incorporates into the number of hours you're putting into the sport. So, wow. Yeah. Fascinating. Brilliant. Okay. This is where I want to bring Vijay in. Vijay, give us a worldview about sports management, careers in sports, and then we'll bring it down to many pertinent questions because you have experienced a lot of uh, challenges that parents throw at you because you used to run a tennis academy. So talk to us about all those issues and demystify them for us. Thanks, Rakesh. Uh, thanks for this webinar. And I see about 100 participants. Thanks to each one of them. Such a welcome break from uh, the virus updates, for sure. So sport in general, um, you know, I was listening to uh, Kriti and Adil. I think most parents, if I want to start, it's about first uh, identifying, like Kriti said, you know, you see some early signs of interest as a hobby. It obviously starts there. Adil also is talking about a six-month rule. That is interesting to hear. And then you figure out whether the school has a, a sports well, program or um, you know an academy in the neighborhood that you want to enroll. And you actually, at that point of time, I would say, you don't even know uh, what they are good at, right? It's just a physical activity to get them going. And then you, you build your skills and you carry on. So um, at that point, I think from a parent view, me as a parent also, uh, you're like so focused on will your child, you know, like this activity? Will they go on to do well? And that's all there is to it. There is nothing about... Um, if I get into this academy, I'll become a world number one in 10 years. There's nothing like that, right? Um, so, so that's the first thing. And the view is uh, clearly uh, on, you know, the child and as they grow. And, and it's the same as going to a school. I always say it's like going to a school and where you're going from kindergarten all the way up to 10th grade or 12th grade. It's the same thing that's happening. You're picking up different skills in the, in the, in, in sport now. Um, what, Usually happens is I think parents, I think, think that the, in general, just from my experience, they think that, you know, that's the heart of sport itself. Of course, their child is playing sport. Uh, like if I want to put it, athlete, of course, if there's a stadium and everything, athlete is in the center of it and everyone knows that and is the most popular person there. But I think uh, the sports industry is way, way bigger than all that, right? I mean... For the child to first go to the academy, you need infrastructure first, right? And like Kriti was saying, there was a coach that actually taught and she got interested in badminton as opposed to a, a different sport. So there is infra, there's a coach. Adil talked about nutritionists. Um, there are physiotherapists. There are So there is there are a lot of people working behind the scenes for that one child to excel or one child to enjoy the activity and things like that. Even bigger views, uh, if you go beyond the academy, uh, you start to, I'm saying if you go professional like uh, Kriti and Adil have gone, then you start getting into events, competition, you start traveling uh, state, national, international, you, you start to see a wider piece. Now all those need, again, you can imagine the number of jobs linked to uh, that level, if you want to host an event, right? I mean, it needs from an event manager to sponsorship to um, journalism to media to, I mean, so there's there's another world out there beyond. Uh, so when you're amateur and I would say when you're uh, professional, so the whole, yeah, thanks for that slide, uh, Rakesh. So, so that's sort of, and this is a very small view that I put. I'm sure there are uh, a lot more to it. But in general, uh, the four tracks would probably be infrastructure, training, competition events, and media. And each one is an ocean by itself in terms of, uh, you know, the breadth and uh, width of what's, uh, what's there. Um, would you like to talk about one or two examples that are connected to this slide? Because this is a fascinating slide. Um, and demystify for parents out there on the various choices they could have their child go through. Yeah, so so as I uh, put it there, uh, you know, while I was thinking through, put it, so it's visible versus not visible. Um, a parent taking the child to an academy or child going there, and that's the only view that they sometimes have, which is the left side of the slide. Mm. 
and the not visible portions because i think and if i put a very india context to this uh, there's somewhere a thought that if you are in charge of an academy or if you're in sports retail or training coaches it looks like it's secondary to being an athlete mm. which is actually not true at all yeah uh, unless you have all the pieces going uh, athlete also wouldn't be there yeah um so the piece that you see uh, uh infra is big uh the training and competition events are uh, rakesh i think would be uh, huge because the training is literally if adil and kriti today are competing at this level i think they'll be able to roll out names of the number of people who work with them to ensure where they are at today uh, and and the same when uh that training is put into practice when they go to a competition when they give their names you know everything is ready for them to go and play their match right and when that match is on schedule and they go there for that the number of people who work behind the scenes uh, for it to make it happen and the final piece is the media which is uh which is the outlet to to all of this what are the basic issues of parents like why are parents so hesitant in letting their children go into a full time sports careers I, i'm sure you have some very interesting anecdotes to share as well yeah rakesh when i used to run the academy i used to get uh, especially bangalore i'm saying being it hub so there would be questions like uh, uh if my son becomes a tennis player um instead of being a software engineer what's going to happen right so uh, there was no answer because that at that point of time the child was 8 years old so i did not know uh, the prediction of the child becoming software engineer too um but so th- so those kind of stuff uh, you can't compare my always thought a uh, thing is you can't compare and like kriti and adil said i the key message here is uh, Uh, they, sh- they had this interest or something that they were you know drawn to that activity and sport to start with and like adil specifically talked about when the going gets stuff it's not just the on court training and all that you know all things have to fall in place i guess at that time uh, it's going to really test their motivation and uh, passion for doing that uh, mm. whether you know you somebody you got to drag yourself to making it happen that day right Mm-hmm. and we all face it you as a teacher you know had the best day to teach but you still do it but eventually sport is like any other mm-hmm. activity i would say a doctor currently now in the healthcare crisis i i think needs to do the same right mm-hmm. so uh, so those are some of the things i think the questions are always linked to uh, comparison can i take sport versus can i become doctor lawyer engineer and i'm an engineer myself i've done my engineering um and i've returned back to sport so i uh, i you can't uh, you know uh, pick one and say you have a formula for 10 or 15 20 years that all those things are going to happen you got to figure it out right mm. um so that's uh, that's what it is no i think at some point of time as a parent myself uh, a parent's mind sometimes becomes a very binary calculator it's either a zero or a one and there is no there's nothing beyond that and uh, the second thing is that making choices can become very hard uh, like i'm sure that one of the choices parents have to make today is that if i miss the bus of a class yeah. 10th decision yeah. and then 12th is right here and then you know his my my son's friends are going to go here my son or daughter will go here what if he will tell me after 20 years you know if his sports career doesn't take off he you spoiled my life you could have made me an engineer and doctor you know i think they are always in this melodramatic uh, yeah. visual visual of life ki it's like you know we watch too many hindi movies and those hindi movies come at the wrong time <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe so do you have parents like that melodramatic uh, oh, yeah. case plenty plenty i've seen and i um, i think um, you know my view of the next generation we're discussing uh, uh, adi uh, adil and kriti uh, generation right so i'm saying in my time i'm saying late 80s when i wanted to pursue i don't think it was such a, a easy choice you it felt like a massive risk mm. now with the way the sports industry has grown 
uh, and the kind of support that I'm hearing, whether it's NIOs, we didn't have all that, mm. right? And, uh, you know, I recall when you ask this, I, I, I recall this. So when I got into engineering and then I find out that my seniors in college were Anil Kumble and Chetan Babur who were, and then I figured, oh, actually they were playing for the country and they were actually doing pretty good in academics as well. Wow. So, so when I used to see that, all that I heard in my neighborhood, in my family and all that seemed like it was a myth. Mm. Until you actually saw people do it. And then I've spoken to all these guys and they, I, I think they would say they were only doing two things. Like Adil saying they were either, um, they went for their practice, they went to college and they managed their time and they just reasonably did well. So the other point I would like to make to parents here is it's a myth that if you uh, don't play sport, then you're going to crack the, you know, top 10 academic exam. It's not true either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you could be watching movies instead of uh, playing. Yeah. And whiling away time. So it's not, uh, it's not, it, it doesn't, like you said, it doesn't stack up like that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a very good point you bring up. I'm going to now switch the tracks to again, Kriti and Adil. Uh, one of the things is parents... The second thing is uh, society, friends, um, and then there is this peer pressure. So, Kriti, when you made your choice that this is it, badminton, and I'm sure your parents would have supported you, did you have this peer pressure, ki, Are, yaar, don't do this, combine both? Uh, how did you manage that? Or you were very sorted that, hey, I'm not going to bother too much about what others think and I'll just keep going at this path. Talk us about this. Uh, issue of peer pressure in teens uh, because I find it a lot in my learners and my students and one of the reasons I'm doing this webinar is to really bring up this topic of teens managing peer pressure. So your views on that? Uh, so I haven't really experienced much of this because I've had a really supportive uh, system around me mm -hmm. and I think I'm very very lucky to have that um, mm -hmm. as, both, as both my parents are international sports persons so they know what an athlete goes through. And so they're with me every step of the way. So I haven't really experienced that. Yeah. So I think I, I think okay. Adil might answer this better. Okay, sure. Adil, your views? Uh, um, yeah, I can be heard now. Um, so yeah, I think peer pressure plays a pretty big role today because a lot of kids in school will be like, are you crazy? You're missing so many classes. Why are you traveling? Uh, 20 weeks of the year to play tennis. Like, what is this tennis thing even? Not a lot of people know that professional sports is, is in fact, like a doable option or a career which, which they look into very seriously. So, and honestly, I think it's not just the kids who feel this. It's the parents as well. Other parents will come up to them and say, oh, why did you let your son or your daughter go to live in Europe or live in uh, America for, for tennis? And why did he drop out of school? Like, or for any sport and, and the same reason. So I think that um, if one is, is comfortable with the decision they've made, if they have a close net uh, group of like a family or friends who support their decision and they have like support around them, I think it makes it a lot easier. And um, they basically, at the end of the day, you need to be free when you're out there competing. You can't have all these things holding you back, but you will obviously face some negativity but um, as long as you're sure about what the path that you've chosen and your parents are and your friends are, then, then you're okay. There will always be some people who do not exactly understand what it is that you're trying to achieve. Okay. And talk to us about this, you know, this myth that I have seen that, uh, I mean, uh, there, is, there is this uh, strange episode that has happened with me that Vijay and I were talking uh, there is a acquaintance of mine and uh, their question to me when I was doing this webinar was that, you know, this whole sport industry is a very narrow industry. And Vijay has demystified that, that there is a big mountain of careers out there. But when you're an athlete, you're always stereotyped that, okay, you will become the next, uh, you know, uh, Federer or uh, you'll become the next Sania Mirza and Oh, you haven't become the next Sanya Mirza. So then, when is it going to happen? Uh, does this bother you? Does this pressure come on you, or you have figured out how to deal with it? Kriti yeah. first, and then yeah. Adil, you sure, next. Sure. Yeah. So I think every time I feel that way, I go back to why I started playing badminton, and why like because I I play badminton because I enjoy the sport. Hmm. Nothing else matters to me. <laughs> like, like people say what they want to, but I love sport, and that's why I'm playing. 
Yeah, I love that. I mean, sadly, this doesn't happen in engineering. That if somebody becomes an engineer, they don't say you'll become Bill Gates. But only when you take these alternate careers, and I hate the word alternate. People have these un unrealistic expectations that on day one, ki ab to ye Sanya Mirza hi banegi. And uh, sometimes I have to tell the parents and the people that I meet that hey, I, I'm glad Kriti you said that it's about the joy of playing the sport that you bother more. Rather than the accolades and the media love that you get after that, brilliant. Adil, your views? Yeah, no, definitely the joy and the love of playing the sport should drive you. But I, I think at, at the end of the day, it boils down to persistence. Because only if you keep persisting in the sport can you show those people who who put the pressure on you and who said nasty things about you and why you've chosen this path. Mm. Is you can actually show them that it, all your work paid off. In in my experience, I could say three years ago, I, I moved to Spain. I got a really nice opportunity to. to train at the Rafa Nadal Academy which is a big chance for me big opportunity there was a lot of uh, media coverage a lot of people talking about it people thinking okay like putting a lot of expectations on me and naturally mm-hmm. i put a lot of expectations on myself being mm-hmm. there world class uh, facilities yeah. great infrastructure amazing coaches getting to practice with the best in the world this was all like a dream come true but it things it is if you the the second you put expectations on yourself too is when you beat yourself down other mm-hmm. people will keep having their their views and opinions on how you your life should go and your path which way you're headed but the people around you sh- should keep you grounded the people around you should should know when you're stepping out of line and and personally i feel that when you're confident when you're secure about what it is that you're doing you love the sport you're you're chasing after that goal then nothing else should bother you so whether you win whether you lose it's always you're, you're on that path you're persisting and uh, you're constantly pushing through every obstacle to reach there and at some point you will if you keep persisting so okay um so vijay your views on this issue that how does this whole expectation setting because parents and society have this expectation when you choose sports that you have you have to be like number one uh, how does one deal with that how did you deal with it or how do you manage your parents who come to you i think uh, not even in sport i think an engineer also faces uh... challenges as you know rakesh so if you're finishing your bachelor's when i was finishing my bachelor's the question was haven't you got scholarship in a good us university to study mm-hmm. so i'm still in a third year the question mm-hmm. is asked and by the time so if you get scholarship let's say 75% the question is couldn't you get 100% scholarship so yeah mm-hmm. the point is there is no end to uh, you could be in your own profession and then the uh, you know the path is being uh, questioned by others Mm. i guess this stems clearly from uh, i think fear of failure for any right um and the point i want to make is the next generation uh, when i'm hearing uh, adil and kriti i'm just thinking at, at their age I, i don't even think uh, i could even get to the point of convincing uh, my own parents let alone uh, you mm. know others right mm. on saying that this is what i love to do and this is what i'll pursue, pursue and things like that yeah and their generation i think uh, will have a lot more and it's not just sports industry that's opened up the economy as you know is huge mm. uh, they may even be having three four careers in their lifetime different mm. ones mm. Uh, when you see so many engineers who have turned and become entrepreneurs or somebody quit their field that may even become a norm for them so then this first phase of putting in may up to up to age 35 actually being in sport and they may be able to draw a lot of lessons from that which will be even more useful when they yeah. go further right so uh, the, you know the quick point is it's not like uh, like my dad worked for kenra bank he got in and got out 40 years later one company one public sector there's nothing like that for them anyway mm. uh, so i think uh, i mean i i'm unable to see a risk for their generation with sport yeah yeah i think you bring an interesting point that when you are in the playing side the slide that you showed us there is this finite time right that yeah. you have a age defined career on the field yeah how does the switch happen is it very seamless or is there a struggle do you have some examples of people who played sport and then completely switched and went into like other careers related to sport and managed these four five transitions several several uh, rakesh i think um, also there's an uh, on that athlete segment itself there's also 
you know, it's unnecessary pressure. I think Adil has repeatedly talked about it, the expectations. Uh, I think a parent has uh, kept this uh, deadline as 10th standard even when the kid has started playing. Mm -hmm. um, so before 10th grade, if the kid has achieved top 10 rank, and then they're like, okay, now he's on the right path, right? Mm -hmm. But then, um, you, I mean, so many players who have not had a great track record in juniors, that is in under 18, have gone on to do really well in the senior circuit also. Mm -hmm. So there's actually no need to pull the plug there saying, I tried till 10th. Uh, he did not, he's not a prodigy, so I will go back to studies. Right. Uh, that is one. The second is uh, if you've invested that far, and now that I hear you can study in parallel and get your degree, and it's only about a college degree, actually, if you really think about it. It's about pursuing your sport. At 10th and 12th, it looks like you don't have too much time and you have to study for exams. What I've seen is the actual opposite. When you get into college, maybe Adil can talk about this. Once you get into uh, the first and second year of bachelor's, you actually have time. Mm. Uh, you could go for practice because you're done with entrance exams. You're done and you're still 18 years old mm. and you, you've started your bachelor's. So, uh, so you could, the point is you could give your sport a full chance. That is go all the way and see where you land up. That is, you know, you have to check how the, fulfilling the potential, I would say, right? And if you're not mm. cut out to become, you know, the world top 50, so what? Uh, you've been a professional and you've got mm. a college degree. And then you, and there are several examples of people who have actually gone into any of those, the right side of the slide that I showed. Mm. There are ones who've got engineering degrees and gone back into, they've done their MBAs and gone back into IT industry. There are ones who've gone on and started companies. Mm. There are ones with their passion is even higher in sport have gone on to open their academies and become coaches. Right. right. Um, so, so, so again, so, uh, it's uh, again, it's about thinking a little wider. And I think it's a myth again. And uh, I think this is one thing that I want all of you to remember whoever is listening and this is recorded and we'll put it up on our website that uh, please understand that there is no binary here. I think you can do both. Education is extremely important regardless of whether you're in sports or not. And sports is extremely important regardless of whether you're in education or not. And I think the key point Vijay, Adil and Kriti are making is that you can do both and excel and do a good job. And I think there are many examples that will uh, help you. Now, there are certain choices and balancing acts that have to be made. And that's where the parents and the systems and the options that are there in our country have to come in. I'm going to ask one last question to all of you and request all of you out there to type your questions on the chat. I will facilitate. I'll pick up the questions which we have not covered. We have time for another 20 minutes or so. Um, so here's a question for all of you. Uh, Kriti um, and then Adil and then over to uh, Vijay. Uh, have you thought about your career span for the next 10 years, 15 years, 20 years? Just a milestone, if not a clarity, but have you thought about how you will shape your career in the future? Um, yeah, so I plan to play the sport for as long as I want to. So I think I will play until I'm like 28, 27, 28. And most of it stop then because and then like I'm, I'm, I'm studying, so I know I... I'm doing something that I can do after I finish playing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah I, I don't, I haven't really thought. Okay. Uh, are there any one or two tips or messages or suggestions you want to give to teenagers out there or parents out there? What should they do if they're really into sports but are cringing to take that decision? I think um, you can like try it out and like basically if you give your 100% for your mm -hmm. heart, then for your passion, um, basically the satisfa satisfaction will always be there because if you know you're giving your 110%, there's, there's nothing more you can do, right? Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. Adil, your views? Uh, yeah, so I think um, there's the big, uh, the, well, the myth of, as, as what they say is that there's with sports, there's high risk and high reward. 
right? So you take this big risk, you well drop out of school, as, as they say, and you try and pursue a, a career in sports and you might or might not make it and nothing is really guaranteed in life. But I think parents and, and teenagers out there and kids who want to pursue a career in sports but are not are hesitant because they, they don't want to affect their education anyway should know mm-hmm. that through sports, through traveling the world, experiencing different cultures, food, people, all of that, you're getting as good an education as you can possibly get. I think uh, you mature so much more while traveling the world that it's not really you're sacrificing your education for the sport. Mm. You are getting an education while pursuing a sport. So if if parents and and kids change their perspective a little bit, I think that uh, Indian sports or sports in general, people could um, get impacted way more and they could realize that they can combine their sports and their education and parents can be a bit more free uh, knowing that their kid is out there pursuing their dream in sports and getting an education and growing, maturing at the same time. Brilliant. Excellent. Vijay, your views? I mean, I second what uh, Adil said. Uh, I would go one step further and uh, and it's already been uh, done these days. Just like uh, English, physics, math, I think sports just needs to be a subject Every mm. child needs to study. Yeah. Um, and then if it's there and we already have like the PT periods and all that in school, but only a, a small percentage of schools and institutions actually implement it well. Yeah. If you do that, um, like uh, Adil said, at the elite level, travel itself is education. But even at the grassroots when you're learning, and there's so many things that sport teaches you, which a classroom doesn't. Yeah. Um, life skills of resilience, how to take failure, stuff like that. Yeah. And if more actually play, um, then I think the ones who go on to again uh, take that seriously will not look like a risk. Um, yeah. I mean, everybody studied science and math, so engineering wasn't a risk. So similarly, if everybody plays and then somebody takes up sport, it won't be a risk too. That's true. That's true. And I'm told that there are some very good courses in India if somebody wants to pursue sports, right? That you could do physical education as a proper subject in 10th, 11th, and 12th. Yeah, absolutely. And there are colleges out there where you can yeah. study physical education. Would you name one or two of them, Vijay? Yeah, plenty of them. Like NIS, National Institute of Sport, you have BPED, MPED degrees for physical education. Okay. Each of the sports federations, if you select a particular sport, tennis, table tennis, they have the state federations which have coaching certification uh, programs. Right. And you have level one up to, you know, level seven, you could go up to. Yeah. And, you know, interestingly, when I teach in Mysore, uh, the sports management courses, just as a point, um, in the postgraduate class, I see more engineers who have come back and actually picking up this degree and they want to get back into the sports industry. Yeah. Each one who has actually uh, been at a university level player or somebody who did not, you know, pursue has come back and now you actually have certificate programs which allow you to uh, to do that. Yeah. Fair enough. Now, I think I, I uh, one of the things that I think we, we are doing in these webinars is to also request all parents and teenagers to stop looking at education as these 18 years of education that we are so fixated on. I think we have to stretch it. And we should start looking at education as a never ending process. And in that you can always learn wherever you want. There are graduation program in sports. There are post graduation program in sports. There are sports PhDs and Vijay, you are doing a PhD, right? Yes. And uh, it's on sports and something to do with the whole element of sports. Would you give a sentence or two on your PhD topic? So this is about uh, uh, the implementation of the Uh, national sports policy uh, on the similar subject that I spoke about. uh, We're trying to make sure that it's examined in a way that sport as a subject is mandated uh, at every institution at the grassroots level. Fascinating. And I think it's a beautiful world with the whole sudden push into many sports in India. There's Kabaddi, there is uh, Kho-Kho, there is uh, the usual IPL and cricket, there's hockey, there's a women's team coming up. I think there is so much happening, which is a great time to be in India. And this is where I think I'll take a question or two from the audience. And if we have time, I have one last question I want to ask Kriti Adil. Uh, I'll say the question right now. You both can get some time to think through that. 
Kriti Adil, I want you to tell us how do you deal with failures when you go to a test and let's say you don't get that trophy. Uh, how do you, you know, come to normal? Because this is a big problem I've seen in the world that I live in. We have trained our students for excellence to a point that one small mistake and they fall down and they don't get that two marks. All hell breaks loose and I'm very worried about the learning systems of our country. So I'll come to you on that question, uh, Kriti and Adil, in some time. Our participants are barraging some questions, so I'll take them one by one. Uh, the first question already has come from Srisha Bhalle and she asks a question to Adil Yu. Uh, how has the Indian standard of training in tennis, uh, when compared to that of the world, improved? How has the fitness and the nutritional aspect changed over the years? So this is for Adil specifically. Yeah, I think tennis um, has changed a lot. In India, sports in general has changed a lot over the last few years. There's been more recognition from the governments, so obviously more funds. There have been more people stepping forward, creating more infrastructure, starting new academies because sports are becoming bigger and bigger. As you have more players doing well, PV Sindhu, for example, after that, how big did badminton get? So you have all these, these examples, these role models that come into play, Olympics, whatever it might be. The nation kind of, kind of gets used to, okay, you know, we can, actually, we can actually make it. Indians can actually get there. We can reach the top. So once the belief sets in, things start forming around it. So... The, with new academies, coaches becoming more um, more open to different players coming, practicing together, kind of building a little system for, for Indian sports to kind of excel on a global platform. I think that's changed a lot over the last few years, mainly because sport has become more acceptable as a career. Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, again, there's a lovely question to Kriti Yu. Um, a very nice question. I'm glad somebody asked this question. You said your parents are also internationally acclaimed players. So does that bring you some kind of pressure? Because this is a problem with all of us who, who, whose parents are also accomplished. And then they kind of, you know, stereotype us. So how do you deal with that? So firstly, my parents play table tennis. So that was a whole different world. <laughs> so, so I, it doesn't really add pressure on me. And I feel if they can do it, I can also do it. So I think it motivates me rather than putting pressure. All right. Okay. Um, one more question for Vijay. How important is the role of a coach with players like Adil and Kriti? Uh, super critical. I think the answer is, I think coach, at least at the initial first, uh, uh, I think they were all started when they were, I don't know, between five to eight years old if it started. I guess I still think the, First coach holds the biggest, uh, um, you know, position. I mean, even when I learned sport, because that's the reason you're actually drawn to it. And uh, as you go along, um, you know, you you get into different academies. I mean, you uh, you know, from a grassroots coach to now when Adil trains, you probably have an international coach. Uh, but for an athlete, I guess coach is probably the number one uh, person around. In, sometimes the coach may believe in you more than yourself and that's that's how it goes. Yeah, I agree with that. I think the same philosophy now holds good for all kinds of coaching, even in the corporate world. Yeah. It's a great career as well and I encourage all of you to take coaching very seriously and help someone. So I echo Vijay's views on that. Mission critical today. Uh, here's a question for NIOS. Very good question. Do we have to enroll via regular school or is there an option to enroll directly with NOS, NIOS? And the second question is, what is the advantage of enrolling for NIOS via school? This is a great question. NIOS is a proper government agency. There's a website. You can enroll yourself. You don't need to go to any school. That is option number one. Option number two, your existing school where you are there may have an NIOS offering as well. So there are two roads. I think let's hear from what would be a better choice. Kriti, your answer? So I joined NIOS separately, uh, not from a school. So we didn't really know much about it. And so it was a bit hard for us to like find out information and stuff. So if you join through a school, I think that will be a little better because the school already knows what's going mm. on. And I think that would be a little better if you're looking to join NIOS. Yeah, I think it becomes a slightly more... Mm -hmm platform and then the school can 
put you in the classes because I know a school which does that, they don't distinguish between a student, whether you're doing CBSE or an iOS. So from a student perspective, nobody knows. Uh, but the student has a choice not to come to classes and then the attendance is a slightly more relaxed one. They also have a separate NIOS classroom because the numbers are very huge for this particular school. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, so yeah. about that, so when you go to a school, um, the tuition and stuff happen right there. Yeah. For me, I had to go, like, go find teachers separately who teach NIOS and that was a bit difficult because NIOS is not that popular. Is there an ecosystem for students who want to do NIOS and uh, don't want to go to a school like a mailing group or a Facebook page or something that you know, Kriti? Um, not that I'm aware of. Maybe you can talk to your parents and email it to us. We'll put it up in our blog so that if anybody is interested, they'll benefit from it. Yes, I, I'll do that. Okay. Adil, your views on NIOS? I think uh, NIOS is by far one of the most ideal ways to get your high school degree uh, while pursuing a career in sports or just in general, the flexibility of attendance. I think the question which was asked is, is a hard one to, to kind of answer because I think most of the information is given online regarding NIOS. That's how I kind of got um, all the information I was looking for and all my questions answered. But I would think that we should go to the central uh, office of NIOS in each city. I think there's one. And then you, they locate you, they um, allocate a certain school, a class, a, a, an institute for where you can do your classes out of. Because in each city, they have a bunch of, of um, uh -huh. colleges, uh, schools, which they are in partnership with, affiliated with. Okay. So there's some research that needs to be done behind this and a little bit of planning. Yeah. yeah. But you also, if you can put down a list of resources that you are aware of, uh, send it to us in an email and we'll collate it and put it because I'm sure there are many parents out there who will benefit from this information. Right. For sure. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Vijay? Yes, Rakesh. I was on mute. Yeah. So the question was, are there resources of NIOS that you know? Uh, I know the head office of NIOS in Bangalore is very close to where you are in yeah. Maleshwaram. Right. In, in fact, um, uh, like like Kriti mentioned, uh, there are schools that offer NIOS. I'm, I'm, as a parent, I know my daughters who study in the school. They uh, in that school they actually have created a section for uh, yeah. NIOS uh, opted uh, students. Yeah, and I can even tell you there are um, you know junior basketball players who played for India in that school who go to NIOS, and they you know so there are provisions now to the extent that. Uh, it's not some loose hanging NIOS that you don't know, you don't even go to a school or anything. Schools are also, uh, probably they've figured out that um, they also need to have a classroom uh, environment. Right. They can belong to this place here. And they are aware that they're spending so many hours training um, and, you know, their choice of subjects. And they've allocated teachers to that small group, 10 or yeah. 14 of them. Yeah, and yeah. who are excelling in different so, uh, which is great, and I find that uh, uh, you know. So it's again back to I don't have to leave. I can go to the same school whenever I'm free. I go to school. Yeah, I finish the credits, the learning hours, and other times I'm uh, training. Yeah, I have heard that too. In fact, the beauty of the system is it allows you to write exams twice a year, which is a very you know, when you have that choice as a parent and as a student who's into sports, it's a blessing that, okay, I will not write it in April because I have this crucial sport exam coming or a tournament coming. So I write it in October and it's an amazing system. And also you don't have to finish. Let's say you want to write 10th and iOS. There is no law that says you have to finish ninth and submit a TC and then only write 10. I mean, it's a, that's why it's called an open system. You have to have a certain age criteria. Yeah. And after that, anybody can write. And once you finish 10th, you can write 12th. You don't have to go to class 11th and then come to class 12th. Yeah. yeah. And that's where a concept of gap year comes. And we're going to talk about gap year in a separate webinar. We're planning next month that I think parents and teenagers, please think of stretching your education. Don't do everything in this 12 years that we have designed and it is becoming complex to manage. In fact, it is 
shrinking if if given a choice everybody wants to do 12 years into just 10 years and get students into a corporate life and that's disaster because uh, we have to help you learn um so on that note here is one more question very interesting question that has come that let's say a, a, a sports person doesn't want to do nios he wants to do cbsc icsc or whatever do you think that these boards can postpone the exams for them because that's the question that has come he says that there has been a case where cbsc has postponed the exam for two amazing national level players so your views kriti will that ever happen that the government board waits for a sportsman to write exam i, I guess it could happen in the future i mean i don't really have an opinion on that not that you know of right now no okay adil you i it's i'm not i'm not really sure about the whole cbsc postponing exams obviously i have no experience in that but i do know that nios does have the two year option you can take 12th over two years yeah and do on demand exams so i would i would assume that that's a slightly better option and nios is equivalent to cbsc csc uh, iisse yeah. one of the other ones so so that is yeah. good but yeah but here the question is i want to do cbsc and i want to tell the prime minister of india that please hold on the exams for few days i have a, i have a tournament to go why don't you call the sports secretary and i'm sure they'll postpone it do you think that day will come adil so that's a tough one but i'm sure if the player is up at a high level that they will make some arrangements i think that's the answer yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you prove to the to them that you you know you're making yeah. some marks in your field then i think they do whatever they can yeah i think these are unknown mysteries but if i was an administrator my straight answer is no thanks i am not going to let this happen. i guess yeah yeah we'll see about that but i think these things will never happen that's why the nios has been built so whoever is hmm. asking this question please don't have false expectation about life there is a clear guideline please follow that don't fool yourself that i'm going to you know get these exams postponed just because i want to play sports that i don't think will ever happen all right um here is a very interesting question again um can i take tennis as my second career with studies as first very interesting question i mean it's a deeper question um can sports be a second career vijay your view on that i mean we did this webinar that sports should be the primary career but one of our webinar listeners wants to know can it be a secondary career um so i i mean i i need to know more about the question so i i i'm still not sure why they ranked 1 and 2 and uh, yeah, yeah. what they're trying to figure out but to me uh, the simple answer would be if you're picking the number one whatever that number one is uh, then i think you got to be good at it and you should really be keenly motivated and interested in doing it and that could even be mathematics it doesn't have to be tennis yeah uh, <laughs> right so uh, it's not about uh switching it but it's about yeah. uh yeah the ones what you want to do yeah fair enough one more interesting question how does one decide which sport to follow in case the child is good at more than one that's a great question um kriti your views let's say there is a person who is good at three sports what's your suggestion how does that person decide which one to choose i think your your heart will tell you which way to go it's for nice i like that follow your heart okay adil your view yeah definitely what uh, the kid which sport the kid loves is intrinsic and i mean of course listen to the people around you but basically what kriti said you, your heart kind of decides it for you so i get rakesh, these... i'd like to you know yeah, sorry yeah, yeah. rakesh in that uh, for that question it's a great question it's a problem of plenty uh, yeah. my my humble request would be for the child to make its decision and not the parent making the decision right yeah i agree with that but here's the question deeper because i get many teenagers and uh, asking me this question that i just don't know how to decide there are many reasons it could be lack of proper information it could be fear of missing out many more issues so is there any yardstick is it like flipping a coin priti and adil and vijay what would you do let's say you love three sports and your heart doesn't tell you what to do then what will you do 
you have to look for coins. I mean, if you if you like even I think it's like list down the pros and cons and all of that. Yeah. Then. The good. Answer. That's a good answer. Okay, Adil, your views? Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. Whip out a yellow legal pad, list out the pros and cons of each sport, and you kind of get a better idea. Speak to your coaches, see potential, where it lies. Look at the future, the next couple of years, what opportunities you have around you. Yeah. Area, the financial requirements, all of that. Yeah. Make a combined collective decision with, with your family. Yeah. By the way, there's a lovely movie which I saw. I think I might have quoted it earlier. It's called Eddie the Eagle. Yeah. And uh, Adil, you seem to have watched it. Kriti, have you watched it? Mm-hmm. Oh, you must watch it. Vijay, how about you? I've heard of it I, on, on my list. Brilliant movie. I mean, it's a comical movie, but a real life story of this boy who wakes up one day and says, I'm going to be a professional ski Olympic jumper. And uh, so, and in UK, there is no one who has ever participated in that game. So he becomes the first person to even qualify (laughs) and uh, goes to this uh, place where the practice has to happen, breaks every bone of his body when he does the first jump. He's never jumped in his life, but he goes and tries and breaks every bone and doesn't stop. And it's a hilarious movie, but such a feel-good movie. And uh, that movie kind of brings to this question that how did he decide Olympic ski jumping? I mean, where did this come from? Mm -hmm. And sometimes the answer is nobody has an idea. You just wake up with a gut feel and go on and try it and that's how the life happens and, and rakesh on that multi sport uh, a point i want to make is uh, there is also a myth that uh, um, for example let's take uh, like a nadal or let's take mm. leander pace in uh, tennis right there's a myth mm. that uh, tennis was his first sport uh, from the beginning uh, and it actually wasn't yeah uh, both rafa and leander as examples were trying to play soccer and that was that's where their art was initially right right and much later for various reasons uh, you know so the point is if you're good in two or three sports actually the underlying basic skills athletic skills would be very high mm. and uh, it's not that difficult to go and uh, you know excel at uh, another sport I see. Okay. It's not the way it is seen now that he just was born with a tennis racket and that's why he became world number one. Those stories are usually... Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I think these stories have become very irritating because I'll tell you, I work in these uh, business education circles and I am an entrepreneur and I work a lot with entrepreneurs. There is always this story that this guy got funding in a coffee shop. The investor was sitting behind him. They got talking. And when that t- turn came, the guy cut out a million dollar check. I mean, it doesn't happen like that. And <laughs> the same thing I think happens in life that nobody's going to give you a sports career while standing in the queue. And these are known as legends and they make us feel good. But then we have to work hard for that. Absolutely. Uh, there is a great question and there are like 31 more. So we can't finish them. So I'll pick one or two and then I'll kind of wrap up our show. Uh, here's a great question. Uh, Vishnu says to Kriti and Adil that he lives in a place where coaching is very expensive. So he wants to know that, can he self-coach himself? Are there any options? Because I think it is a question of money, economics, and how you can afford things. So can someone do a self-coaching, work hard, and get into these professional leagues? Um, Yeah, Kriti, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's possible because um, you can learn a lot by watching videos and yeah, like that's a really good way to learn and that's what I mean I do. Like I watch all good players and I try to copy what they do and mm. but a coach is very essential. So I think once he gets to a point, he can. Mm. Uh, all right. Okay. Are there your views? Yeah. I was going to second that. I think it kind of depends on, on his age because Obviously, sports needs to be to need to needs to be fun until a certain age, and beyond that, if you're trying to pursue it as a career, if you're trying to become become a professional, you need all the little little minor details kind of set into your game. You need the coaching expert, the eye. Uh, you need the nutrition. You need the fitness. So all that kind of put together is what makes a professional player. So if he wants to become a tennis player, I think self coaching is is fun. It's a great way to learn. Obviously, watch videos. You record yourself. You can see yourself on the on the recording on the computer, whatever. 
so yes you can learn but up to a certain point but at yeah. uh, at some point yeah coaching is vital yeah i think movie. yeah do you remember this movie called ikbal adil i do um, the cricket player yeah yeah, yeah. he was a bowler yeah. and uh, i mean i now you know what i do i watch a lot of movies and uh, <laughs> that's all i do i watch a lot of movies and keep throwing it and um, but it's a great movie and it talks about that he was just doing bowling his life was not going anywhere and then comes nasiruddin shah who was a professional uh, cricket player and then the movie takes on an amazing route i think you do need help and this is one message i have for everyone we have to collaborate and find the right people i think the world requires you to realize that you alone cannot accomplish anything now again there could be a legend that this one alpha male comes in and solves the world's problem it works very well in books called thus spake zarathustra doesn't happen in real life so please start to collaborate please reach out to someone if economics is an issue find a fund or a scholarship that i think adil you went for and i'm sure there would be many such examples that are out there but please ask for help don't do this alone uh, there's a question from a parent and vijay this goes to you and this parents question i can understand that one is that i my child loves sports so i have a problem to deal with how do i balance in education what if it's exactly the opposite my child and the school has no focus on sports so how do i inspire my children to take up sports okay um yeah it happens but school is uh, you need school support in my view uh, closer to when you're playing more tournaments and you're going competitive because you need uh, you need you may want to apply for leave to uh, travel to the event and all that at the early stage uh, you can always go to the nearby academy evenings weekends and you can still pursue sport uh, at the amateur level that you don't need any help from school yeah only after you get to a point uh you know then you probably need school support i think i understand the root of his problem see i as a child was a very sluggish lazy bum and i had never liked sports so there are people like me and uh, for a for a parent it can be quite a nightmare if you are and especially today in the lockdown where you are hold up with a cell phone and ipad and you are putting on weight and obesity and other things are a big problem because a diet is also very heavy these days any tips to push children to play minus the lockdown uh, is that for me rakesh yeah 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 to you vijay um, yeah neighborhood act, so i would so usually i'm just giving my exp- uh, experience um, you know in, in cities like bangalore and most metros you you have small places around where you can actually yeah. roll yourself in you yeah know, it's indoor outdoor sport and yeah i think to me to me those are the nurseries of uh, yeah. that's where you go and figure out and i think the parent and the child learn uh, yeah yeah adil's point of 6 uh, months that testing hobby when you like that place you like the coach yeah you got friends out there and you don't want to miss a class you know those yeah. things emerge right yeah um so i think you got to keep it around i think the first academy i always say should be within couple of kilometers around your house wherever and yeah. figure out and then you can you know then you'll have the motivation to go farther and farther makes sense we'll take one last question and again there are 34 more so it's pouring in today has been an amazing webinar i don't want to stop uh lataish says is diet important how much does it contribute to success do we need to have a separate dietitian kriti your view followed by adil yeah uh, so so a, a dietitian is very important because each person is different and your each each person needs are different and uh, you can't um, come up with it on your own so help from another person is really important and uh, the diet plays a very important role in your game mm. it helps a lot in recovery and recovery is very very important i agree adil your yeah. views well said um yeah diet is definitely very important and as kriti said every athlete every player every person is different with their blood type with the sugar levels everything um so generally a, a nutritionist would take a blood test see what you're deficient in which vitamins which are minerals and then give you a a diet plan based on that and i feel like that's extremely important because you can maximize your 
when you're on court, you know exactly what to drink, how much water, how much sports drink, a banana, a date, whatever works for you. So you kind of find out what works for you and then you give yourself the best chance to, to have the highest energy levels and to feel good on court. At the end of the day, it all boils down to trying to give yourself the best possible chance at having energy throughout a three-hour match, for example. And um, it also helps you, especially when you're a kid, to kind of to grow, to maximize your growth. I uh, met a nutritionist by the name of Ryan Fernando in Bangalore when I was, I think, around 11, 12. And at the time, I was roughly around five foot. And working with him for about two years, I grew pretty much a foot. My dad is six feet tall. My mom is about five one, and I'm six foot three. And I, we kind of credit that mainly uh, because of the nutrition uh, that I kind of, I was open to nutrition from a young age, and he really helped me uh, maximize my growth during those the growing years of my childhood. Makes sense. Uh, one last question, and we have many questions, but we have answered majority of them. This one is for Vijay. Uh, there is a myth that if you really wanted to be a be a professional sports, India is not the place you have to go abroad. Is this true anymore, or is it a myth? I don't. Uh, I wouldn't like to believe that. Um... Each uh, athlete, like I uh, put up in the slide, I think uh, everyone starts uh, small, starts local, and then they go on. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if the question is related to, um, of course, when you get a college yet uh, in US and Europe, you actually, like US has an NCAA, uh, and they have managed to integrate uh, sport along with your bachelor's degree and things like that in almost every university. Mm. At, at that point of undergrad and post-graduation, it may look like uh, that's more favorable. Mm. Uh, but at the initial years on, um, I, I don't see much of a difference. Yeah. No, I think there are a lot of questions from everyone below. Like a parent is saying, my child is showing interest, but I need a proper channel to get the coaching. So Vijay, can you also help me put together two or three resources? which we'll put up in these blog and there are many more questions. I think the common questions I see coming is I have a child who's interested. I'm happy to put them in sports, but I don't know the process. What is the right starting point? Right. Second is uh, you just now demystified that you just don't have to go to an American institution. Uh, Adil is studying in Jain university in Bangalore and he's doing fine. And I'm sure Adil, uh, Adil, would you agree with that, that India has enough, opportunities for sports today as compared to what it was many years ago? Definitely. India has um, has come up a, a huge amount. I mean, there's definitely a lot more opportunities here in India. However, I feel at a higher level, you need to play a lot more international tournaments. And unless India starts hosting more in, in international tournaments, it's going to be a little difficult to stay you know, national and make it a, at a high level. So at the end of the day, you do need to travel abroad, get that experience exposure, and then you know, find your way from there. Okay. I mean, there was this amazing question and we'll end with this. How are you guys managing in the lockdown? I mean, you are all sports people. Uh, Kriti, what, what are you doing to keep yourself sane? Oh. <laughs> so, um, I'm doing my fitness, which is all I can do right now. So, it, like, basically, I, I have a lot of time. So, I'm trying to do things that I couldn't do before. Nice. Yeah. So, and basically, I just, I want to, by the end of this lockdown, I don't want to Look back and say, oh, I didn't do anything. Very good. Very good. How about you, Adil? Well, definitely same thing. I'm doing my fitness. A lot of things which I wouldn't be able to do while I'm on tour traveling around the world. I'm obviously hitting some balls against the wall. Somebody's dropping, feeding, I'm hitting, you know, whatever we can do, hustling it. And yeah. uh, I am volunteering to kind of help the underprivileged people who are not um, getting their food because they're daily wage workers and stuff. So I kind of, I would like to, you know, hopefully encourage other people who are watching this to do their bit in their area because a lot of people are suffering during these times. So if they can also step out of their comfort zone and, and go and help these people, I think they, they would really appreciate it. Excellent message. Very, very well said. Appreciate it. Uh, Vijay, how about you? I try and eat less because I don't <laughs> go out. Um, so keep a watch on calories, but otherwise uh, uh, I see it as an opportunity. Uh, I was reading today uh, to the participants as well. In today's Decanal, there was an article which talks about uh, badminton players are using this time perfectly to go back and finish up some studies, a few other things that they wanted to do and that they can do online courses and things like that. Um, 
so with technology like like how we are hosting this during the lockdown um right now i think it's a, it's a window of opportunity if you want to focus and finish on something yeah i echo that and with that i'd like to summarize our entire webinar we could go on but i know everybody has time uh, and priorities including my guests kriti adil and vijay thank you for uh, giving me such an amazing insight and so much of your valuable time not just today but for the last 8 9 days we are working together on this to both your parents as well kriti and adil to support us behind the scenes i'd really like to thank them and uh, vijay to you for guiding this entire webinar in the right shape with your expertise and experience um i think the summary of what i'm hearing from all of you is that sports like any other career whether scientific or humanities or philosophical is an amazing career and uh, it should be treated in the same respect as anything else without sacrificing and saying that this is not education it is education Absolutely. now once you decide that it is education you have to work harder like how kriti adil and i'm sure vijay you would be doing it it is double the effort like any other uh, passion that you have you've got to clock in hours and hours and go with the joy of playing the sport like how all of you mentioned very clearly and ios serves as a great option now if you are a parent who has reservations then make your choices then you don't you know play sports and don't push your child to play sports then you guide them towards academics now it doesn't mean you can't do cbsc or ib and igcse and sports it's possible but it just puts a lot of pressure on your child and adil kriti and all their friends and including vijay who works with a lot of teens and players and ios is a lovely option and you can get any admission in the world like i would have done vijay would have done and you would have done give it a shot and please go to the website and uh, we will talk more about this and ios because i also know that we have performing artists who are doing an ios we have many amazing careers coming out just because there are many students who are saying that hey i don't want to just sit and mug and memorize and write an exam i might as well do a great career in nature environment sport and also finish my 10th and 12th and uh, if i was a teen today i probably would have jumped on that option please see if it works for you and the last is this also is a new industry as compared to what it was in india so it requires effort from all of us vijay has sent an amazing slide we'll put that up in our blog and there are many questions that are coming in that we will summarize the recording of this webinar will be available to you in the next 3 4 days on our website sum.education and uh, my colleagues avantika ruben thank you so much for organizing it vijay adil kriti thank you once again and thank you to your parents as well and have a wonderful safe indoor uh next two weeks let's hope on third may things big but become better but doesn't mean that you all go out into malls again uh please practice social distancing for the next few months because we all have to work together to keep us safe so thank you very much good night everyone god bless thank you thank you very much bye bye see ya bye bye ಅಪ್ಪ ಬರ್ತೀರಾ ಇಲ್ಲಿ